So languages need some way to convey and model movement and action. In English, we have verbs like fight, run, attack, defend. In math, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and etc., which model the movements of numbers. And in binary, we have Boolean operations. So the more popular operations are the OR operation and the AND operation, and they reuse the same symbols as math, such as the addition sign and the multiplication sign. And how this works is that the two input variables get fed into these wires, and then an output is produced. And let's evaluate this really quick to find out that it isn't 100% like the math that we know. So 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 1. And this is where I was like, what the heck? Because 1 plus 1 should be 2, right? But why is it 1 in this case? Well, first reason is because we are using a binary system, and only zeros and ones exist in this universe. And secondly, is because I said that we're going to be reusing the symbols for math, but we're not really doing math in a sense. We're doing an OR operation. So it helps to read out loud 1 OR 1 instead of 1 plus 1, so your mind doesn't automatically jump to 2. And really, this is the only case you have to watch out for, because this is the only case that it doesn't behave like math. So, yeah. The AND operation, though, behaves exactly like the symbol it steals from. So I can read this as 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 1 is 1. So it behaves again like regular multiplication, but you will find that saying AND out loud, we are doing an AND operation after all, might help you reason with it better when we combine these operations together. Speaking of which, let's start combining these operations together. So here we have the problem, not 0 or 1 or 1. And to solve this, we start from the inner parentheses. So 1 or 1 is 1, and then 0 or 1 is just 1, and then the not of 1 is 0. And that is our final answer. Alrighty, so let's see if you guys are up to the challenge. Try to pause the video and work through these on your own before we walk through them. So I'm going to assume that you guys have paused the video. So for problem one, not of one is just zero. And then we just do zero or zero, which is just zero. We bring down the one and. So one and zero is just zero. And that is the final answer. For problem two, 1 or 1 is just 1, and, and then we do the next parentheses, which is 1 or 0, and it's just 1. Wrap these in parentheses. Or, not 1 or 1, so 1 or 1 is just 1, the not of that is just 0, and then we have 1 or 1 and 1 or 0. 1 and 1 is 1, and then 1 or 0 is 1. Alrighty, so I'm sure you guys can get the hang of that relatively quickly, but now let's move to using functions instead of concrete values. So since we're dealing with binary values, we have the luxury of knowing every possible input and output to a Boolean function, and we could write them out in a table, and this table is called a truth table. And of course, if you remember from the last video, since we have three inputs, three bits, there are only eight possible combinations, unique patterns, that is, for the inputs, and eight possible outputs. And to find the outputs, we just plug in the values of the input to the function and evaluate it. So let's just do the first two. 0 and 0, or not 0 and 0. So not 0 is just 1. 1 and 0 is just 0. To the left, we have or 0. 0 or 0 is just 0. Now the second one, 0 and 0, or not 0 and 1. So not of 0 is just 1, 1 and 1 is just 1, and then we are left with 0 or 1, which is just 1. 
So pause the video and try to evaluate the rest of the inputs into the function and fill out the table on your own. All right, so here is the correct output table. Please check your answers. I'm not gonna do them because I feel like it's gonna take the entire video. But anywho, it's pretty easy to go from function to truth table. We just plug in all the possible inputs and evaluate them for the outputs. But what about the other way around? What if I give you a truth table and ask you to create the function? And this is what you're going to be tasked to do for the entire rest of the course material. You're going to be given a truth table. And for that truth table, you're going to need to find the combination of operations that fit that truth table. And it's almost like a puzzle game, really. But let's explore why we're even doing this in the first place. So say you're throwing a party and you tell your robot butler that you only want pizzas that have both mushrooms and pepperoni or ones that only have mushrooms or ones that are plain with no toppings. And this can be summed up with a truth table of two inputs. The patterns that have an output of one means that those are the pizzas that we want. And the question is, how do we find the combinations of operations to string together that will give us the pizzas we want while blocking or rejecting the ones that we don't want? Well, all we have to do is that we have to look at the patterns that have an output of one circled in red and where they have a zero, we run them through a knot and then we and them together. So the first pattern, for example, zero, zero, they are zeros, so we have to run them through a knot. So it's going to be not M, not P, we and them together, and that should produce a one for this specific row only. Moving on to the next pattern, one zero, there is a zero, so we have to run that through a knot. So it's going to be M and not P. We only touch the zeros, that is, we only run the knots through the zeros. And finally, the last pattern, which is just one, one. So we just do an M and P, and that's it. And finally, we just OR them all together. And this is the combination of logic gates that will give us an output of one on the patterns that we do want an output of one while kind of blocking and rejecting the ones we don't. And to write it out as a mathematical function, all you have to do is that you have to replace the ORs with a plus sign. Alrighty, so we're going to implement the function that we just did earlier, visually on a sort of gate simulator. So we go to circuitverse.org simulator. I'm going to leave links in the description. And I'm going to change the project name to the function that we want to implement. And hopefully you guys can see that. So what we're going to do is that we're going to scroll in first. We're going to put two inputs down. That is our M, that is our P. So this is our mushroom bit. And this is our pepperoni. There we go. And the important thing about this simulator is that you guys shouldn't overlap wires fully. Like you can't do, you should try to avoid doing this, where it just overlaps fully, because it's going to glitch out. You can do something like this, though, where it sort of overlaps. That's fine, just try to not overlap fully. But anywho, we have our two inputs. And for the first expression is not M and not P. So we need an AND gate. And we, again, have to run them through two knots. So here's a knot. Here's a knot. I'm going to label these. It's optional to label them. I'm just doing it for you guys. You are not P. There we go. And here, I'm just going to drag these wires into the inputs. And then they're going to have an output and we just drag them to the end. And that is the first expression. I'm gonna label that too. So that is not M and not P. All right, moving on to the second one. We need another AND gate. Here we go, I'm just gonna put that there for now. And we need another not P, so I'm just gonna drag the not P from here. And we need the M. Oh, come on. Oh, it's going to overlap. No, I don't want to. I'm just going to do that and then that. 
And it doesn't matter how ugly this looks, just make sure it works. Alright, so that's the second one. M and not P. Okay, and finally the last one, which is M and P. So we don't need the knots here. So what we do, I'm just going to put it there for now. So this is the knot. Well, this is just the plain M, and this is just the plain P. You could have also dragged it from here. It doesn't really matter. But anywho, we just or these together. This covers those operations, the ors. Need one more or gate. Because there are three plus signs, or two plus signs here, but these only take two inputs. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And finally, for the moment of truth, the output is just this thing. And voila. If we go back and look at our truth table right over here, we said that this should be the only pattern that should output a zero. That is when M is zero and when P is one, right? That is the pizza that we don't want. So let's just check that very quick. And it is, the output is zero still. Well, all the other patterns still output a one. So I said that mushroom and pepperoni is fine. Only mushrooms is fine. And a plain pizza should be also allowed through. And this perfectly implements our truth table that filters out the pizzas that we don't want. And thinking in more general terms, I know this is kind of like a weird example, but thinking more generally, this could be anything. Like this is how computers make decisions without brains, using only binary logic. This could be like um, a calculation for a move in a video game, or calculating some number on your bank account, or shopping, or etc. It all boils down to these combinations of logic gates simulating behavior in a sense. And that's why we're doing this, because it sort of simulates behavior. So it's really important that you guys get used to going from a truth table to an implementation, because this underlies the rest of the entire course material. And really, you're going to be writing a textual representation of this, and all of this visual stuff is optional. But if you ever get lost and confused, which I did when I went through the course material, you will find that you can reference these visual simul simulations and they will honestly help a lot. And I actually didn't do that because I didn't know they existed. So thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.